Greetings friends! I don't know about you, but over the past two years, I have noticed less food and other items in our stores. And there's been a couple times where my wife and I, we would go to a store to buy a particular item and it would be completely gone. And there's been a time or two where we've gone to go buy meat and then there was no meat in that section in the grocery store. And growing up here in the United States, all I have known throughout my life has been abundance in our stores, never lacking any food. So over the past two years, seeing less items on our shelves, well, it's pretty alarming. And as a Bible reader, it brings Joel 116 to mind when it says that your food will disappear before your eyes. So as we see these things happening, what do we do? Do we just get hopeless and in despair and just sit around and be depressed all the time? No. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I strive to not be a gloom and doom type of person nor a gloom and doom type of channel here. But as it's written in Proverbs 22, it says a prudent man foresees evil or danger and takes precaution. So as we're seeing various things happen, we don't get all ultra negative and just focus on the negativity. But at the same time, we also don't get on the other ditch and just ignore everything that is happening. We make sure we get our spiritual life in order. And then as we see the things happen, we do what we need to do on our part to take care of ourselves and in our families. And one action that we all can take is to develop a closer relationship with our food. I spoke about this in great detail in a conference that I was recently at, and I'm sharing that video with those of you who join our membership area. So if you haven't seen the membership that I offer for this channel, just click on the join and you can see more info about the memberships that I offer. What my family and I are doing as we see the different things that are happening with our food system is one, if we're not able to grow it ourselves or are not currently growing it, we try to connect and purchase from others in our area that are growing these things to help support them purchasing from farmers and local growers in our area. So that way, if things happen and the stores are closed, at least we can go to them, continue to go to them for those items. And same for you. If you're not able to grow something, try to connect with others in your area that are. Purchase from them, trade with them, whatever. And the other thing that we're doing is focusing on growing and raising nutrient-dense foods. Now in the past I've grown a lot of lettuces and I could have a farm completely covered in lettuce. But you know what? All that lettuce is not going to provide you with nutrients that are going to keep you vibrant in health and calories that are going to help you have what you need to go about life. And when I'm talking about nutrient-dense, I'm not talking about the nutrient dense foods or the foods based on the pyramid that we were taught in school that has contributed to the sad American diet. No, I'm not talking about that at all. In fact, that pyramid actually should be flipped upside down and reverse because the foods that they were saying to eat a lot of is the foods that you need to eat less of and the ones that they say to eat less of are actually the ones that we should be eating more of. So those are the things that I'm focusing on producing more and more here on our farmstead. For starters, eggs is one of those foods. For years they have beat up cholesterol, but in fact the cholesterol, like particularly in egg yolks, is vital for helping your body to absorb vitamin D. And eggs and chickens is one of the biggest reasons of why my family and I left the city life sold everything we had to move out here into the country to live in a yurt and the homestead so that way we could have our own farm fresh eggs to eat and to enjoy. And over the years that we've been here we've been raising both ducks and chickens for eggs and some of the varieties of chickens that we've had have been Rhode Island Reds, Delawares, Sex Links, but one of my favorites has been the black ostler. I really love that chicken. It produces eggs really well and it's a calm chicken. I really like it. But this coming year 
we're looking to add some others. And we recently ordered some more chickens. The past two years, Sayla has been taking pictures of our chickens and ducks here on the farmstead. And she has been submitting some to Murray McMurray Hatchery. And you know what? Some of those pictures have actually been featured in their catalogs. And it's so neat to see that as we're placing our next order to see her pictures in the catalog. How does that make you feel? Makes me feel really good. You sure about that? Does it make you feel terrible? You're like, oh, there's my picture again. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the things that I really like about their catalog as well as their website is they show you from a chart which of the breeds are either best, better, good, or fair at producing eggs. So if you're looking for a good egg layer, you just flip through and look at the different breeds and see where that icon is. And we just placed our order for chickens that we're getting this year. We're gonna get some in the spring, some in the summer, and some in the fall. And some of the egg layers that we're getting that we're excited about that I've never done before are the Whiting True Greens. And we're also gonna be ordering some more Black Oshelorps since we really love that breed of chickens. But last fall, we got a new breed that I hadn't tried before, the Bielefelders, and we have them right now. And they're the calmest, gentlest chicken that I have personally have ever seen. Not only are they calm, but they're also really good at producing egg. <laughs> Yeah, they are pretty calm, aren't they? Yep. There's been times where they'll just come right up to me and be like, all right, I'll pick you up again. <laughs> They're really good foragers here, too. In here, we have both Bielefelder and Niedenreiner. The Niedenreiners are bulkier to have more meat on them, but the Bielefelders are just, you can just tell, they come up to me a lot easier. And then we have our African geese here that are loud. <laughs> Super calm. This one just let me pick it up. No problem at all. Look at there. Showed you right there. Yeah, pretty calm. What do you say, Sailor? Somebody new to chickens? Probably definitely a breed to start with for, yeah. for egg laying. Especially if you have kids around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so see? Yeah, just like that. There was a lot of vegetation here in this area just not too long ago, and they did just a great job of just mowing everything down. And the geese probably helped too. <laughs> They're pecking my shoes with all the different colors on it. <laughs> oh, they are. That's kind of cool. Maybe they think they're real flowers or something. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> and in addition to eggs, Another nutrient-dense food that we are growing and raising is our own meat. We've been raising a number of meat birds over the past couple of years and have done so even more over the past two years as, as we're seeing things happening. And we started off with mostly raising Cornish crosses. However, I'm trying to get away from those and I'm trying to get away from the hybrids because I want to do something that's more sustainable and birds that are easier to for us to reproduce on our own. I've also tried the Mur Murray McMurray's ginger broiler as well as their big red broiler. And I've also done the Delaware Enhanced, which is an heritage broiler. I actually really like it. It has really good flavor as well. And this coming year, I'm looking to raise more of those as well as I'm looking forward to trying those Niedenreiners out there. So that'd be great if we could have two heritage birds that we can reproduce here on our homestead. The Delaware Broiler as well as the Niedenreiner. That'd be, that'd be fantastic. And since we're saving the Bela fillers here for egg layers and we'll soon be processing these Niedenreiners, we needed to separate them. And one of the things that makes separating them interesting is we do it at night. Alrighty. Alright, let's turn it on. 
Okay, it has eight modes. One, two, three, four on that one. And then the next set. One, two, three, and four. Sometime now I've been looking for some good flashlights. Good headlamp and a flashlight that's good quality but wasn't too ridiculously expensive. All right, we got these from Phoenix and, and eager to try them and now's a perfect time to try them. I have this 1600 lumens headlamp here. All righty, this one is the PD40R. One, two, three, four, five. All right, you take that one with you. Okay. Wow, look at there, I like that. You see pretty good. Yeah. I like how far I can see with this on, man. Wow, we can see right inside the wheelhouse pretty easy. Man. Check yours out, test yours. There we go, is that the high setting? Yep. That's pretty good. All right, let me test mine again. There we go. Man, I like this. Let's see how far you can see across the pond. Wow, <laughs> we can see if something's over there. Yeah. Like you can that. run, but you can't hide. <laughs> Turn this off. Alright everybody, you ready for this? Yep. Alright, so what we need to do is we need to separate some of these. The Bielefelders we're going to keep for egg laying birds and the Niedenreiners we are going to process. But before we do any moving and sorting, we first need to move the geese because they won't be happy if we try to move the chickens and thinking we're doing them harm. We don't want to be attacked by the geese, so we need to move them first. In the past, I've used my cell phone or cheaper flashlights to do this job, but these new Phoenix flashlights work out so much better. Take them on. All right, just I'm gonna go back and get the other goose, but I want you to get the lawn tractor, use the light, bring it on down with the transport crate in the back of the gorilla car. Here you go. Here's the other one. Yep. I brought her. Yeah. I should have gotten a headlamp a long time ago. Whenever we have to do things like this in the dark, <laughs> it makes a big difference. Being able to use both hands to do it and being able to see with the light. See some eyes shine over there for some goats? Yeah? Hanging out over there?
of you may be wondering, why in the world are we doing this in the dark? Well, it's much easier to get the ones that you need to, in the dark, but also when you're introducing them to the others, when they wake up in the morning, it's like, hey, do I know you? Oh, no, you've always been there. So that transition is much easier at this time. Slip and fall. Wow. We've gotten a lot of rain here lately. Look at all that mud there. Yuck. Ready? Lift. Come on, lift. We'll get it over there. Yep. A lot of birds in here. I should have killed it. Alright. 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 Driving on up there, man. The next morning, it was nice to see the Bielefelders hanging out with the rest of our layer chickens. It's like they have always been there. And the geese are doing just fine too. But in addition to raising chickens for meat birds, we also raise ducks for eggs, as I mentioned earlier, as well as for meat. For eggs, the breeds that we do are Khaki Campbells and the Welsh Harlequins. We do some runners as well, and we do Gold Star. But one of the rumors that I've heard here this year, which has got me wanting to be even more diligent in what we're doing here for raising our own, is that there may be smaller numbers of ducks available to purchase from various hatcheries. So I'm like, hmm, we need to step it up. So recently, we have taken some of our Pekins that we have been saving specifically for breeding purposes, and we separated them out. All right, Sailor, we need to get a male. And a couple females. What's the biggest male that we have? Alright, I'd say the biggest male would be right there. One right here? Yep. Right here? Right there? Alright, let's see if we can get him. Next, let's get some of our Jumbo Peak and Female. Come on, do it at home. 
seal cap like reflex of sailor. <laughs> And the reason we separated those ducks is because they were in our primary duck area with a bunch of other duck breeds. And we are trying to reproduce more Pekin ducks with the meat characteristics that we want to have more meat for our family. And for those of you who don't know, a female duck can hold male sperm for two to three weeks. So here soon we'll be past that period and we'll be able to start gathering those eggs and putting them in the incubator. Oh, that smells good. It's so nice raising your own food. So with raising chickens, not only do we get the meat off the chickens, but we also get the bones that should make bone broth with, that you can add in to other things that you're cooking. But also you get the organ meat and you can save those chicken livers and gizzards and all that. And that's even more nutrition for your family. So you're getting like a big bang for your buck whenever you're growing your own meat. And I especially love my Yeti pot that I use almost daily because I can put a whole frozen chicken in here and cook it for an hour and a half and it's totally done. So I love it. And in addition to the chicken eggs, the duck eggs, the duck meat, the chicken meat, we're also raising turkeys, goats for milk, and we also hope to do some meat goats in the future. And we plan to do some zebu here pretty soon as well. So we're continuing to try to increase and do our part, despite what's going on around us, to do our part to make sure that our family is well fed. But in light of all of this, what we all need to keep in mind is that ultimately all of our lives are in God's hands. And we, we need to make sure that we're doing our part to draw close to Him, make have a relationship with Him, and do what is pleasing in His sight. Because all the things that are happening in the world around us is happening because of people doing what is not pleasing to God. And as a result, those things are going to continue to happen. But my friends, be strong and be of good courage and keep moving forward.